Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Now in yesterday's one I showcased an RTX 2070 that I purchased as an X display model simply because I needed something to replace the 5700 XT in certain scenarios where that card wouldn't function as it should. For example, when testing older motherboards, the 5700 XT sometimes causes black or green screen issues, whereas the 2070 hopefully does not. Now I needed to test this out and so I paired it with an old Core 2 Quad CPU on a Socket 775 board. And whilst doing this, I came up with a bit of a silly idea, but it just got me thinking as to how Minecraft RTX would run using this now ancient quad core CPU, a CPU that you can pick up for about 10 pounds here in the UK or 10 US dollars. The concept is a pretty silly one. No one should really be pairing a CPU of this age with a card like this. But as I mentioned before, I need to know that everything works as it should. And when I'm testing older CPUs, I generally pair them with a powerful graphics card so that we can allow the chips to reach their maximum potential. Now I know Minecraft can be fairly demanding anyway, depending on what mods and tweaks you install, but RTX, the whole beta that's recently become available, is another story and I've seen some pretty sluggish gameplay even when using 2080s and the like, especially if you turn DLSS off. Now enabling DLSS in the Minecraft RTX beta essentially runs it at a lower internal resolution and then upscales it to fit your display. Putting it simply, I prefer to just call it magic. Now doing this will grant you a lot more frames and as you may have seen yesterday when I turned DLSS off in Minecraft RTX I was achieving about 11 frames per second as opposed to 35 FPS with it on. Now when you look at the minimum system requirements for example obviously Minecraft RTX requires an RTX 2060 minimum but they're a bit more vague when it comes to CPU details. It simply states an i5. Now you could interpret this as being a first generation i5, but of course we will be using something weaker and the Core 2 Quad Q6600 is that something weaker. So let's get straight into it and see what on earth this diabolical combination can do when it comes to ray traced Minecraft. So my thinking here was that because Minecraft RTX relies on a beefier GPU and doesn't exhibit too much concern as far as your CPU choice goes, that it should at least be playable on an old Core 2 Quad. I don't know why I thought that should be the case. I mean, it doesn't say anything about an LGA Socket 775 chip in the requirements. Just a reminder, here is how the game runs with DLSS on my Ryzen 5 1600 rig with 16 gigs of DDR4 RAM and the aforementioned 2070. At 1080p, the frame rate will vary depending on the map, so the average here has been worked out by combining all of my FRAPS test results. Some of the NVIDIA RTX maps will run near flawlessly, and others will struggle to even get close to 60 frames per second. I have increased the ray tracing render distance to 20 chunks up from the default and lowest figure of 8. Maps like Colour, Light and Shadow RTX will cause the Ryzen to fluctuate between 10 and 20% usage, whereas Imagination Island and Neon District will be slightly more intensive yet still leave a lot of breathing room for the 6 core 12 threaded chip. So there's a quick recap as to how the Ryzen system handles things, but now we must check out how our cheap and 13 year old Q6600 performs. I should mention that I've paired it with 8 gigs of 667 megahertz DDR2 and overclocked the chip mildly from 2.4 gigahertz to 3. Not an impressive adjustment by any means as these can go quite a bit higher, just not with this cooler. So as we play, I'll just be giving you a general overview of each tested map, starting with the Colour, Light and Shadow RTX one. I have set things back to default now, and once again we are playing at 1080p with DLSS enabled. Anti-aliasing is set to 4, particle render distance is set to 50, and the ray tracing render distance is set at 8, the lowest option. What I like about this map is that it gives you an immediate demonstration of how the lighting works with the environment. But more than that, 
it's how it's probably the least demanding of the lot. Here we are back at Imagination Island now, and although it looks less impressive with the settings turned down, it still does look pretty good and plays okay. 40 frames per second was the average, so we've lost a few from before, but overall it's still playable, and just in case you're wondering, turning DLSS off had a detrimental effect on performance, and I wouldn't recommend doing this. Luckily, it's enabled by default, so as soon as you jump into the game, you should be seeing the frame rate that you can expect to proceed with. Just as a quick test, I then turned the ray tracing render distance all the way up to 16 chunks, to get an idea of the frame rate when we use similar settings to when we had the Ryzen in the system, and as expected, it looked pretty awesome, but we were getting about 20 FPS during my time with this map, so as much as I like to say that my theory is 100% proven that Minecraft really doesn't care about your CPU, it does, of course, to some extent. You just have to be careful and cautious with the settings that you choose. Moving on to the Neon District, which I was absolutely dreading, and the frame rate is totally destroyed, even with the default settings restored. There is a lot going on here in quite a confined space, and our Core 2 quad just does not like being a part of this system. Again, it's a great demonstration of how everything works, and visually it's rather enjoyable, but unfortunately we'll have to stay away from this map with the CPU. It seems like my theory is falling apart minute by minute. <laughs> To finalise, I then moved away from Minecraft altogether and returned to Quake 2 RTX, a game that will hit 1000 frames per second even with this processor in 2020. With RTX enabled, we were seeing the same frame rate as yesterday at the exact same settings, which was around 50 with the Ryzen 5. Turning RTX on at the cost of 950 frames doesn't sound like the best trade-off in the world, but it does make things look a bit shinier. All in all though, I hope that if any of you were wondering whether a $10 Core 2 Quad could play RTX Minecraft or not, your question has been answered. Thank you very much for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, leave a like on it. Leave a dislike if you didn't. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. And hopefully, I'll see you all in the next one when we will be taking it back to some more budget related content and not focusing on the RTX as much.